Definitely one of the things that you want to study for antifungals is their mechanism of action. This question is probably the most popular of all for antifungals. So let's look at the figure, because you can actually look at the mechanism for a number of our drugs right here. I'll remind you that the most common target for an antifungal drug is the membrane component ergosterol. It's fungal cholesterol that is the most common target. You'll notice the drug amphotericin B can bind ergosterol. It's actually going to open up pores in the membrane, making the membrane very permeable, and that ends up killing the fungus. But other drugs inhibit the synthesis of ergosterol. For example, the azoles, drugs like ketoconazole and fluconazole, inhibit the enzyme 14-alpha demethylase, blocking the conversion of lanosterol to ergosterol. Remember, never just memorize the drug name and the enzyme that it inhibits. Know the pathway. Know that while you're on a drug like fluconazole, you're going to accumulate lanosterol because you can't form ergosterol. If you back up earlier in that synthesis pathway, you see where the drug terbinafine works. It blocks an enzyme called squalene epoxidase. That's an enzyme that converts squalene into squalene epoxide. Eventually, this will inhibit the production of ergosterol as well. But the specific action of terbinafine results in the accumulation of squalene, which is toxic to the fungus. You also see the fungin drugs, like caspofungin and others, which inhibit the synthesis of a cell wall component, beta-glucan. So many of our drugs target ergosterol, but as we see with the fungins, there are some other targets as well. We'll start antifungals by looking at amphotericin B and also discussing the drug Nystatin. The mechanism for both drugs involves binding to ergosterols and opening up pores in membranes, as we've discussed on the previous slide. Resistance to amphotericin B, for example, happens when the fungus downregulates ergosterol. In essence, you reduce the, the target for this drug and you can develop resistance. Amphotericin B has long been considered a broad-spectrum antifungal, but because of toxicity, its use has been very much limited over time. It's still the drug of choice, or the co-drug of choice, for severe infections caused by cryptococcus and mucor. But even when we use this drug for those conditions, we most often will use it for a defined period of time and then switch to a different antifungal. An example would be when you're treating cryptococcal meningitis. Amphotericin B is often combined with the drug flucytosine. This is our one and only example of antifungal synergy. We use flucytosine not only for its synergistic effects, but also because we can lower the dose of amphotericin B to try to reduce some of its toxic side effects. But when you start somebody on amphotericin B and flucytosine, you give that combination for a defined period of time, then you discontinue and switch them to a drug like fluconazole, once again to minimize the side effects. Nystatin is also very, very toxic. In fact, it's too toxic for systemic use, so we only use it topically for localized infections like candidiasis. If you think about the treatment of oral candidiasis with nystatin, it's available as a swish and swallow formulation, which reduces systemic absorption. When you look at the kinetics for amphotericin B, the drug is given by slow IV infusion. It has poor penetration into the CNS, and it has a long half-life. It takes a long time to clear this drug from the body. It's metabolized as well as it's eliminated by the kidneys. There are side effects for amphotericin B related to its infusion. In fact, a patient can get fever, chills, muscle rigor, and hypotension, which are all caused by histamine release. So before giving somebody amphotericin B, you can pre-treat with antihistamines or adrenal steroids to prevent these infusion-related side effects. I've mentioned several times now that amphotericin B is toxic. Most often this manifests as nephrotoxicity. It can include decreased GFR, tubular acidosis, you can see decreased potassium and magnesium, as well as anemia, through decreased erythropoietin. So we look at a number of different ways to try to protect against the nephrotoxic effects. Sodium loading, 
using liposomal encapsulated amphotericin B, or using drug combinations, most commonly together with flucytosine, allow us to lower the doses of amphotericin B and therefore reduce the risk of nephrotoxicity. You can clearly see why the drug has earned the name amphoterable as a reason why we watch out for these side effects. Next, we have the azole antifungals. They're so-called azoles because of their five-letter ending, A-Z-O-L-E. But most of these drugs are, in fact, conazoles. You see ketoconazole, fluconazole, itraconazole, and voriconazole are all drugs we're going to discuss. These drugs have the same mechanism, which is that they inhibit 14-alpha demethylase, the enzyme that converts lanosterol to ergosterol. Resistance is mostly related to decreased intracellular accumulation of these drugs. First, let's look at ketoconazole with regards to its activity in clinical uses. Today, this drug is rarely used as an antifungal. It can still be considered for paracoccidioides and as a backup for blastomyces and histoplasma. Its use in other organisms like candidiasis or dermatophytic infections has been dramatically reduced in favor of other drugs. If I had to pick my favorite azole antifungal, it's the drug fluconazole. It's very popular today. In fact, it's the drug of choice for esophageal and invasive candidiasis and for coccidiomycosis. We also see this drug used for prophylaxis and suppression of cryptococcal meningitis. Your fungal meningitis question on the test, very, very popular. You can use amphotericin B and flucytosine initially and then switch to fluconazole as we discussed earlier. When I consider the activity and clinical uses for itraconazole and voriconazole, I always focus you on the use of voriconazole in aspergillus. Aspergillosis questions are very common on the test. In fact, here's a way to remember. When you think about the organism aspergillus, the treatment involves voriconazole. Starts with the letter V. In fact, if you remember V for A, voriconazole for aspergillus, and when I say equals, that means aspergillus branches at 45 degrees. Do you remember that as a property of that organism? So V for A equals 45 degrees. Clotrimazole and myconazole are other antifungals that are available over-the-counter and used topically for candida or dermatophytic infections. When it comes to the pharmacokinetics for the azole antifungals, make sure you focus on the drug fluconazole. It's the only one of the azoles that can effectively penetrate into the CSF, and that's why this is the drug used for fungal meningitis. The drug is eliminated in the urine, largely unchanged. The other kinetic property that I want you to focus on is the ability of these drugs to inhibit P450 enzymes, where ketoconazole is the most classic inhibitor. In fact, when we look at the side effects for azoles, I once again focus on ketoconazole. Because of its ability to inhibit P450 enzymes, it inhibits the synthesis of steroids, including cortisol and testosterone. In case you don't remember, the steroid pathways involve a number of P450 enzymes, many of which can be inhibited by ketoconazole. So side effects like decreased libido, gynecomastia, and menstrual irregularities can occur with this drug. Another reason to limit its use because of these side effects. The next drug to look at is flucytosine. Flucytosine is activated by fungal cytosine deaminase and converted to 5-fluorouracil, arguably the drug with the best abbreviation of all, 5-FU. You recognize 5-fluorouracil as an anti-cancer drug. In other words, if you understand the mechanism for flucytosine, you also know the mechanism for 5-FU. 5-fluorouracil forms 5-fluorodeoxyuridine monophosphate, which maybe has an even better abbreviation, that's 5-F dump. So why, what does 5-fluorodeoxyump compete with? It competes with deoxyump for the enzyme thymidylate synthase. So these drugs inhibit thymidylate synthase, an enzyme that converts deoxyump into deoxytmp. In the presence of flucytosine 
or 5-fluorouracil, cells can't form thymine, and therefore that leads to cell death. Flucytosine is almost never used by itself, but commonly it's added to amphotericin B for synergy, especially for cryptococcal infections. The toxicity of this drug is bone marrow suppression. Not a big surprise, by the way, because flucytosine, like 5-fluorouracil, inhibits DNA synthesis, and that affects rapidly proliferating cells, including those of the bone marrow. When we look at the drug griseofulbin, this drug is very effective against dermatophytic infections. But over time, its use has declined in favor of newer agents like terbinafine, a drug we're going to cover on the next slide. The drug does inhibit microtubules from forming, and it can cause a disulfiram-like reaction if you drink alcohol while taking this medication. When we look at the drug terbinafine, I see a couple of possible test questions. The drug is very useful today for dermatophytic infections. It works by inhibiting squalene epoxidase and blocking the formation of ergosterol. The specific action of this drug also results in increased levels of squalene, which is toxic to the fungus. The drug can also be used for fungal nail infections, and it's a little bit better overall, perhaps, than griseofulvin. Side effects for terbinafine are most often very mild. You might have to watch out for some hepatotoxicity, so look for elevated liver function tests while on this drug. Our last group of antifungals are the echinocandins, which includes the drug caspofungin and other fungins. These are drugs that inhibit the synthesis of a cell wall component beta-1,2 glucan. By blocking the production of this critical cell wall component, you actually kill the fungus. Today, these are backup drugs given IV for disseminated and mucocutaneous candida infections or invasive aspergillosis. Watch out for liver dysfunction while on these medications.